Hello YouTube. Today I'm going to make a video for all those who are playing Kerbal Space Program and want to get into space but haven't managed it yet. So today I'll walk you through making a simple rocket and getting it into a stable orbit as well as bringing it back down safely. So let's take our basic command part here and start. Now the first thing you want to do is go here and place a parachute on top of the ship. So that allows us to land our command capsule safely once we come back down. Then we want a decoupler. What it does is it separates every it separates things here removing separating the command pad from whatever is below it so we'll place one advanced SAS module and one ordinary SAS module on it the advanced SAS doesn't stabilize the ship itself it rather controls all the things that stabilize the sh can be used to stabilize the ship it's essentially a flight computer and you only need one of it placing more than one on a ship won't accomplish anything except make it heavier and waste space the ordinary SAS module actually helps you steer the ship so you always usually you want at least one well, you want one advanced SAS module here and at least one SAS module on the ship. Usually I place it here. That gives you some control of it even when you're not in the atmosphere and not using rocket power. Now we'll add a pair of fuel tanks here and we'll place this small engine here because this part is what we'll be using once we get up out into space so up there we don't need a lot of power and this engine is a lot lighter than this and use fuel a lot more slowly so it's actually more fuel efficient because you're carrying slightly less weight of course it's totally useless for when you want real power so, and we'll need lots of power to get into orbit, so we'll use this, which is the symmetry tool. It allows you to place uh, the same set of components around the ship in the same place, well, so that they're symmetrical. So, we'll place these around halfway up this part, because we don't want things to be we don't want the rocket to be too tall while at the same time we don't want it to be too heavy on the top so then we'll add three fuel tanks here oh yeah these are radial decouplers they also separate things but they do it sideways Okay. So, we'll uh, add this engine here. Now, this engine allows you to... It's a vectoring engine, meaning that it can alter the direction it's applying its thrust in, which is something the flight computer can use to stabilize your ship. But since this is a small ship, we won't need that. The SAS unit should be enough to control it pretty nicely. Now this stage will get us up into space. Now here you can see staging which will alter slightly in a second. This here is a strut. It ties things together so that things don't rip apart or wobble in flight. Essentially, it allows you to tie things together to make your ship more stable. So, you'll want to add 
one set here and one set here to tie these four together properly otherwise they're only connected through this one place and the ship they will wobble some and the ship will be less stable than we would like although still manageable okay anything else we want to add no i think that should be okay okay so staging here this essentially determines the order in which the various components are used so first these four engines would fire then these four would be used to separate things sep to get rid of these four engines so that we don't carry their weight with us and then this engine here would fire so we'll rearrange this so that as soon as these separate this engine starts firing and this here separates the command pa capsule and this last stage deploys the parachute of course so let's call this orbiter 1 and go to the launch pad Yeah, we wait a second until it loads. Okay. So, here are our brave astronauts. Let's try not to kill them. The first thing you want to do is press D to turn the control systems on. Otherwise, these two won't be doing anything. And then you want to press space to start your first stage to start using your first set of components here oh and you want to press shift to throttle up your engines otherwise you might not have enough power to get off the launch pad now there are fancy ways of getting into orbit various ways of turning the ship while still within the atmosphere but we won't be using any of that we'll head straight up at first and then once we are into space out of the atmosphere we will turn our ship and then work towards our orbit now the thing with that is that while in orbit your ship is essentially falling but you are going so fast sideways that you keep missing the planet and never actually come down Well, yeah. So what you want to do is press M so that you can check your trajectory. This is your apoapsis here. It's the highest point of your trajectory. You want to bring that up to about 140, 150 thousand meters before you turn your engines off. Then you want to wait until you get out of the atmosphere. Then you want to turn your ship towards 90 degrees using the WASD keys and then you want to burn towards your orbit we'll get to that in a little while right now we are heading up in a nice controlled stable ascent so we shouldn't have any problems with this stage now why you want to make your apoapsis that high is that it gives you plenty of time to turn your ship and start your burn without worrying about missing things not a huge amount of time but more than enough even if you make a few mistakes and the ship is pretty small so it should be easy to manage hmm. yeah. you can see the fuel tanks draining here the first eight are already drained and we run the last set here you can use right click to view a component in those cases where that is possible that is okay okay now let's open this up which allows us to control our ship and open this up 